Now let us consider the angle of repose. Angle of repose, this is the case we consider for the inclined plane case. Assume that a plane inclined an angle alpha with the horizontal like this. We are keeping an object of mass m on this inclined plane. Generally the weight of the object always downwards that is perpendicular to this plane. So weight is along this perpendicular that is mg and we need to resolve this component mg into two components. One is perpendicular to this plane, other one is along this plane. I am resolving this weight in two components, one is in this direction that is perpendicular to the plane and other component that is along the plane like this. What is the expression for the perpendicular component and parallel component for this inclined plane in terms of this weight? To determine this, let us consider the rectangle triangle here. If a rectangle triangle here alpha some r theta is the angle and hypotenuse it is r. Let us consider this case where theta opposite side some x, theta adjacent side some y. These two components in terms of this hypotenuse and angle how we are determining means simply we are taking that sin theta if you take that is x by r or x can be written as r sin theta. Similarly cos theta if you write we will get that y by r or y is nothing but r cos theta. So like this we are determining the opposite side and adjacent sides of a rectangle triangle if we know the hypotenuse and angle. Fine. Here if you observe that this component we are taking this component like this mg component and this component we need to determine here. For that if you know the angle here what is the angle between these two components. For that if this is alpha if this is 90 degrees observe this angle should be 90 minus alpha is it. Sum of these two angles should be 90 degrees to, so that the total sum of the three angles is equal to 180 degrees in the triangle. So this is 90 minus alpha means total this is 90 degrees once again once again if this is 90 minus alpha remaining this should be alpha if this is alpha then only 90 minus alpha plus alpha 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 cancels total 90 degrees so that this plane and this perpendicular component having 90 degrees. So what is the angle between this weight and this component that is alpha. If this is alpha uh, assume that here theta if this is theta what is the adjacent side if this is hypotenuse y y means this is r cos theta in the similar way if this is alpha alpha adjacent side if it is a rectangle triangle like this here then if it is 90 degrees here for this alpha for this hypotenuse it should be this side should be of mg cos alpha is it and this component along the plane that means like this this parallel component if we take here so this opposite side theta opposite side that means angle opposite side this x is nothing but r sin theta so that here alpha opposite side hypotenuse multiplied by sin alpha that is mg sin alpha is it. So these two components we have determined here this is mg sin alpha this is mg cos alpha fine let us take this mg cos alpha here and along the plane always we will get sin component mg sin alpha and generally if two surfaces are in contact there is a frictional force and normal force. So the frictional force is a tangential component or along this plane if this object is tending to move downwards because of this force so that friction always acts opposite direction to the applied force. So we have to take the frictional force upwards to the plane. So what we have to observe here it is frictional force in which direction we have to take. This is the two surfaces in contact. This friction is a tangential component we know that but whether we have to take in downward direction or upward direction we have to determine. So as per this frictional force definition friction always taken in the direction of opposite to the applied force direction. Here which force existing now mg sin alpha is a force 
that is acting downwards on this object. So correspondingly, we have to take in the reverse direction the frictional force, that is F. Then the normal or perpendicular component of this force, it is normal reaction or normal force N. So consider the free body diagram for this mass. If this is a mass, if you consider that free body diagram for this, upwards that is normal force, downwards that is mg cos alpha and this is rightwards that is frictional force F, this is leftwards that is mg sin alpha and let us consider the equilibrium case here normal reaction should be equal to mg cos alpha and horizontal forces it is frictional force F is equal to mg sin alpha. Consider that I am dividing this F with this N. So F divided by N if we take that is mg sin alpha divided by mg cos alpha mg mg gets cancelled and we will get that tan alpha here. So this is tan alpha and here F by N is there. F we know that mu N frictional force is coefficient of static friction multiplied by normal force divided by normal force that is equal to tan alpha. Observe N N gets cancelled and coefficient of static friction it is also defined as the tangent of this angle of repose. Already we got that coefficient of static friction it is the tangent of the angle of friction and similarly here it is the tangent of angle of repose both are same. So the coefficient of static friction mu s that is equal to tan alpha or tan theta we can take or simply alpha the angle of repose you can write in terms of this coefficient of static friction as tan inverse mu s just as theta is equal to tan inverse mu s, we got that this alpha is equal to tan inverse mu s. So that this is the relation between angle of friction and angle of repose.